Um, can you please tell me a little bit about the way that the system works? Like there is no pedal that you press gas. It's the body. So yeah. how is it? What is happening inside that with the way of your body, this thing moves? Can you explain that? Yeah, it has, has an internal mechanism that uh, works on weight distribution. And what the, once you, and it comes also with the support of the, of the batteries. So you turn it on and what happens is that it will stabilize. It will be stable and it will not move when it's on and you don't have a weight on one on the front or in the back. Right. So once you, once you start moving forward and you lean your body forward and the weight distribution of your body shows the wheel that it's going forward, the wheel starts pushing you. Hmm. So, it so it's the weight you. thing. Yeah, you're right. Because when you have it on and there's no weight on it, it's just standing. It stands. So yes. it doesn't have any remote control thing. or any pedals or anything hmm. that any click that you go forward and backwards. It all depends on your body. So the good thing about this is first that it creates a really big awareness of our body distribution and yes. weight. Yes. Then you work a lot your core of yes. your body without even noticing and without feeling the workout. Right. Your, your body is engaged. All the muscles are engaged. Yes. And then you start going very slowly into, okay, if I go a little bit more forward, it will speed up. If I put my body to the back, it will slow down. Then when you go become a real expert, I cannot do it yet. You can even go reverse. You can go backwards if oh, you wow. have balance. I haven't mm -hmm. been able to do that. Just then yet. You, uh, just yet, exactly. Then mm -hmm. when you turn, it's very subtle that you start moving your body a little bit to the side and the wheel starts going to that side that's left or right. right. The important thing is to always have with your legs tight against the wheel. Yes. Yes. No, your shin, in your, your inner shin. shin you to be like tight. tight. I'm so excited to make some sort of a tutorial because um, that way we, we could have the wheel and then demonstrate and exactly. show. Because show. right now the audience don't have the wheel in front of them. So when we talk about it, like, uh, you know, what are they talking about? But I am excited to make that tutorial with you. go into a wheels polo what we can also see is once you start riding on the wheel you and you control that you start into a completely different rhythm that is the stick and ball to start to play play by yourself mm -hmm. so once you're imagine you're you control already your weight to go forward stop and go right right and left and as you have seen any upper body movement moves the wheels to one side or the other one. Right. So imagine right. when you start stick and bowling and you do a full swing yes. against the ball. You, then you work even more your, your ball, your <laughs> core. And mm -hmm. it helps you a lot with, with polo because you start being able to independently move your lower body from your upper body. So horses correct a lot our posture when we're playing polo because mm -hmm. they're heavy. So you can put a little bit weight to one side or the other one and the horse will keep going. Right. The wheel will help you to improve your position of your body and able to be able to move the horse in the right direction, hit the ball without putting a lot of, of strength or muscle into it, but just with the swing of it on both sides. So it's a great development tool. Since... We started this little by little. The kids start playing. Uh, most of the sons or kids or daughters of the professional polo players 
bought into this idea very right. fast because they saw the advantages that you can play and train basically the, every single day, everywhere, anywhere you are, you can play polo and practice polo. Right, so because the sport of polo is expensive because of horses. Exactly. So if you have a horse that you just charge it up and you go yeah. and you don't have to feed it, that's awesome. Yes. So you, you, you cut down on cost for practice at least. You cut down on price on, on, on cost on practicing, but you also open a huge avenue for new people that are interested into the sport yes. to try it, to try it at a, at a fraction of a cost. Yes. You can do a parallel of learning how to horseback ride. Yes, let me it bring it back to, um, my question was, where in the world right now the e-wheel polo is being practiced? Right now we are playing in over that we're growing between 12 and 15 countries around the world. And how are the rules? Are the rules as similar as regular polo or can you just touch upon it quickly? I don't want to go too deep. Yeah, into no, it. The, the whole idea behind this is to have the same or as close as possible, the same rules as polo. So your transition from electric polo or, or e-wheel polo to polo is as smooth and as easy as you can. So I, prefer to play on a polo field even if it's not from goal to goal but kind of in the same position i prefer to play the rules are four versus four and uh, you cannot just grab the ball tap 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 and go to the other side you need to tap three times max and pass the ball to to, to your teammate okay so that's a new thing you have to tap three times max three times and max. Do you, have you registered this i mean these rules are written or how I've is written, it yeah no the rules are written it's a work in progress uh, awesome. it's a new sport so we're all the time and talking with the pros and people that are playing it they give me suggestions for safety for uh, more enjoyment of the game and we're we're growing slowly on that and putting some basic rules but they go very much hand in hand with the traditional polo and the idea of this is to open a gap for more people to get to know the sport, the polo, get to a gap where people can practice and improve their game. So when I started playing polo or any kid starts playing polo, when you start playing polo and when you're playing, the difficulty of having of being on the horse that is 10 times or 20 times heavier than us with a long mallet mm -hmm. and a small ball, and then you're trying to uh, take the horse where the ball is, try to have your timing to hit the ball, most of the time you will miss that ball. And then you have to go around with your horse, try to position him again, and hit the ball again. Mm -hmm. What E-Wheels Polo helps you, it gives you a lot of early development from the hand-eye coordination with the mallet, which is a smaller mallet, same ball, and on an open field. Mm -hmm. So you start practicing. I have a kid that bought the wheel from in Casa de Campo, in Dominican Republic. And he told me, after two months, he told me, Enrique, I was playing, the, guy, the kid is uh, 12 years old, 10 years old. And so I was a polo player, or I consider myself a polo player, but I couldn't really hit the ball many times. So I was mm -hmm. hitting once, missing, and then somebody else was passing it to me. So his after game improved by practicing, practicing two months, on the field tour. I have a question for you. What is your, since our time is really short, I wanted to know what is your favorite memory of any of the pros, any of the possibly like, if you have any of the tangolers. I know Sapo Cassette, he uh -huh. borrowed one of the e wheels that uh, I am trying right now. What, is, what, are, what are the good memories or fun memories of one of the tangolers getting on e wheel polo for the, or e wheel for the first time? Yeah, well, <laughs> many. It's a uh, first. I uh, have a good memory with the uh, Sapu cassette when he called me because his nephew, his, uh, his, yeah, his nephew was using one and he wanted to try. One and he wanted to try it. So for me to go and talk to him and give him advice on things mm -hmm. related to polo, for mm -hmm. me, was kind of a weird situation. It was like, <laughs> you're a tangoler. You're a top <laughs> player in the world, and I'm going to teach you something. That his openness on learning oh. was so amazing. Incredible. One of these top guys say, 
I want to try it. I want to see how do I and, and start developing that. Lovely. And another great example, he then ended up playing very well. He already knows the whole thing, but to develop that was great. And him telling me that it helps in practice, that it's great. Then another professional player used to be a 10 goaler through his kids also start playing. And then he told me, Enrique, this is the closest thing to playing pole on horse that I have experienced in my whole life. Oh, wow. And this is a, a guy that has gone through a lot of tournaments and many years at top mm -hmm. level. And his brother, which is also a top player and winner of, of uh, Palermo Open, he was telling me, I finally understand when I play with somebody that is not as good or is a starting a zero or one goal player. And I finally understand. And I finally understand when he's going to hit the ball and all of a sudden he's not able to hit it or even to get the mallet to try to hit it. And he said, through this process of learning E-Wheels Polo, I am understanding more this guy, why he doesn't feel comfortable letting the mallet go and trying to hit the ball because there's so many things on having the horse and holding the horse, holding yourself on top of the horse plus the mallet, the whole thing. Yeah, so he yeah. said, I get it now. It's a, it was a brilliant eye opening for him. And he said, from now on, I think I'm going to be a better professional player when I play with the people that hire me or lower goal players, because I will be able to explain them more how or the fears that they have, the insecurities that they have, because he just lived through them trying to get on the e-wheels and learning on the e-wheel polo. And when you're learning to ride, you have the mallet, there's a ball, and you say, heck no, I'm not going to hit that ball because I think I'm going to fall. Those right. kind of things are great experiences for me. Then I have another former 10 goaler Open, uh, Argentinian Open winner. Now he's one of the top coaches, polo coaches in the world. And he wants to buy four wheels for his family in Argentina. We have an issue trying to see what's the best way of sending them there. And for him to go in an interview uh, with another polo group and saying, this thing of you wheels polo, it's amazing. It's the best thing I have seen. Awesome. Well, you know what? Polo. Another thing is that uh, polo players like to play golf and tennis because yes. it's very close hand and eye coordination to what they're doing. So knowing that he will kind of just kind of coming up in a rank and putting itself you know, on top, that's pretty cool. Well, I am very happy to have you on the show. Unfortunately, our time is short, but maybe we can do another interview in the near future. And uh, thank you again for coming on the show and sharing with us your knowledge of Evil Polo. I encourage my audience, if you want to have fun, this is a perfect time. And Enrique is a perfect guy that will educate you about e-wheels. It's so much fun. You may get a few bruises. I have them, but it's worth it. I definitely encourage everyone to try it. Thank you so much, Enrique, for coming on the show. Thank you, Ms. And if I may, before ending, I want to thank and appreciate a lot the work that Aspen Valley Polo is doing with the e-wheels polo. They're doing Absolutely. a great exhibition games for kids the melissa gansi and the gansi family have been pushing this project forward which is great and you see the enthusiasm of the kids playing their games there which is a, a big uh, success for aspen polo valley so aspen valley polo club that so is a great note to end support. on i want to thank aspen valley polo as well and melissa gansi and gansi family they have done so much for the sport of polo and e-wheel 